Alright guys, welcome to the one year anniversary of Wittens. It's crazy to think I started this one year ago, time goes so quickly. Guys, welcome to a new monthly installment on this channel where I'm going to be telling you what's in the night sky this month and giving you some tips on how best to photograph them. But the response to this series has been amazing and I love how engaging it's been with you guys getting involved, sharing your images. It's been so inspiring for me. Uh, it's just wicked to get the community together and we're having people now all over the world using the hashtag and being inspired to get out and enjoy the night sky. Anyway, it is February and we have long cold nights still, so make the most of them because you will start complaining when they disappear. But there's not a lot going on this month. The Probably the highlight of this month is on the 19th when we have a supermoon. It is the second of three supermoons we have this year. And at a distance of 365,864 kilometers, it is the closest supermoon of the next eight years. Now, even though supermoons are not really discernible to the naked eye, they are still a little bit bigger. So moon bazookas at the ready, and hopefully you can get a nice moon rise or a moon set around the 19th. Now a full moon on the 19th, new moon is around the 4th. So all of your uh, dark photography, that makes sense, things like the Milky Way uh, will need to be at the start of the month. And whilst we're on the topic of the moon, let's look at some of the conjunctions this month. Okay guys, starting with this conjunction of Saturn, the Crescent Moon, Venus and Jupiter. This is on the first of the month and unfortunately I'm getting this video out late because I've been playing in the snow. Um, so I'm really sorry about that, but we've missed this one now. But if we jump to the second, it's a very similar scenario except the Moon and Saturn are really close. Like, that's a really good opportunity, especially if you have a Moon Bazooka. You might even be able to get Saturn's rings next to a crescent moon but this is the typical morning sky for february we have venus rising at about 5 a.m and it's shining at a really bright minus 4.2 jupiter rises at about 3 30 a.m and that's shining at a reasonably bright minus two uh, and then you have saturn following in the twilight skies uh, shining at 0 0.6 but what you'll see as the month goes by is that Saturn and Venus actually converge and they get closer. Venus is going eastwards against the backdrop of stars. And eventually as we get to the morning of the 28th, there's another really nice conjunction. We've got Venus, Saturn, the Crescent Moon and Jupiter. So hopefully you can redeem yourselves from missing out on the on the first but that's a really nice conjunction in the morning skies there when it comes to the evening skies just after sunset you've got mars high up in the southwest and uranus is close by and they also converge this is the eighth the ninth the tenth Mars, Uranus, and the Moon are very close together. Which could be a nice uh, Moon bazooka shot or a telescope shot. And on the 12th, the Moon uh, and Uranus are very close to each other in the night sky. So, one for the deep space guys. And if you've got um, some binoculars or a telescope, you'll be able to find Uranus nice and easy using Mars uh, as a guiding point of light. Now the one of the special thing about February is that we are now able to see the zodiacal light and actually some people captured it in January but if you face the direction of sunset uh, after sunset you should see a triangular diffuse glow of light extending from the horizon and this is interplanetary dust catching the sunlight and because the zodiac is so vertical uh, against the horizon we get to see this dust being lit up by the sun. It is a very faint object, very much like the Milky Way. So if you are trying to capture it, you want to make sure that there's no light pollution in the west. 
because it will get washed out by light pollution and it does very easily get washed out by moonlight as well. But other than that, the normal settings that you would use for something like the Milky Way or just general astrophotography. And that's about it for this month. There's still a bit of winter Milky Way in the night sky and especially if you wait till the early hours of the morning, you can capture a, a nice Milky Way panorama and get the arch. It's not like the summer Milky Way arches that you see, but it's still possible and it's facing west as well. So it opens up new compositions compared to the Milky Way panoramas that you will do during Milky Way season. And of course the winter circle is still dominating the night sky and it's rising earlier now so you can catch it in the evening uh, and get the full winter circle nice and early and even get home into bed at a decent time. And really that is it guys, make the most of the long dark nights whilst you still can, wrap up warm, get out there uh, and just enjoy the clear skies because these crispy cold clear skies really are the best you get throughout the year. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. Last month I asked you guys to tag your posts from the two special events of January, which was the Quadrantids Meteor Shower and of course the Total Lunar Eclipse. It wasn't many from the Quadrantids Meteor Shower, I know it was cloudy here in the UK, uh, but I really like this shot from Zizak Zizak uh, in Ho Ohio. You have a photographer there with a nice little quadrantid above them. Love that one. And when it comes to the total lunar eclipse, I really like this telephoto series by Creative Ladva. Just a collection of the moon through all of its various stages of the eclipse. But my favorite from the lunar eclipse and from the hashtag this month was by Fabian Dalpaz in the Dolomites with this lovely sequence of the full moon as it goes through all the stages of the eclipse. And I really like how he's stuck to the same uh, focal length for this image, he stayed true to the scene, no crazy curved composites or anything, it's a very true scene. And it's worth noting that Fabian has only just turned 16. I met him in the Royal Observatory at Greenwich for the uh, Insight Astronomy Photographer of the Year Awards last year, where he was picking up the award for the best young astrophotographer of the year. And now that he's turned 16, it means he's joining the adult categories, but I have no doubt that he's gonna see continued success. So good luck to Fabian this year. And if you guys are thinking of entering, um, I think it's up until March sometime, uh, you can enter your, your images into the Insight Astronomy Photographer of the Year. It's an international competition, free to enter, and pretty awesome cash prizes as well. But it's a really, really awesome competition. and. Just the running and the organising, everything is just really, really fantastic. And yeah, that is it guys. Wrap up warm, get out there, enjoy those cold, long, dark nights. And if you are going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.